What's going on people? Samsung just launched the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3. If you're in the US or Z Fold, Z Flip, let me know in the comments. I'm Tommy, you're watching Gadgets Boy. Let's have a look at what's new. So the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, it's very similar in many ways to the Z Fold 2. And you know what they say, if you ain't broken, there's no point fixing it. They've just done some sort of incremental upgrades to change a few things here and there, made it stronger, made it more functional with the new S Pen feature. And maybe that brings the end to the Note series. Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments below. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 is gonna be available in three different colors. So you get the Phantom Black, Phantom Green, and Phantom Silver. So we're no longer gonna have that mystic bronze that I really like, which is a shame. I wish they brought back that color. It's just really nice. For the display, we have two displays, as you know already. So we have the cover screen, which is a 6.2 inch HD plus dynamic AMOLED 2X display. And this will give you 387 PPI. It also has 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate for the first time. And this will go between 60 and 120 Hertz. Previously on the Galaxy Z Fold 2, we have a 6.2 inch HD plus Super AMOLED display as well. And that one gave us 386 PPI, but you only add a 60 Hertz refresh rate on that one. So we've had a bump up in terms of refresh rate on this new Z Fold 3. On the main screen, we have a 7.6 inch QXGA plus dynamic AMOLED 2X display. And this is called the Infinity Flex display as it flexes and folds. And this will give you 374 PPI and 120 Hertz adaptive refresh rate. So inside displays, adaptive refresh rate will go from 10 to 120 Hertz. So depending on what you're doing, it's gonna adjust accordingly, or you can select it yourself in the settings as well. The adaptive refresh rate of the inside display can go from 10 to 120 Hertz, which is pretty cool. It just saves battery. So when you don't need that 120 Hertz, it will utilize a lower refresh rate for whatever you're doing. But you still get a really good experience regardless of what you're doing, whether it's watching films, whether it's scrolling through websites and messaging, and or whether it's just gaming generally. In terms of weight, the Z Fold 3 is actually lighter than the predecessor. So you're looking at 271 grams versus the predecessor, which had 282 grams. In terms of processor power, this is running the latest five nanometer Snapdragon 888 processor, which is gonna help with that battery consumption as well as it's five nanometer. So this is a lot more efficient and powerful at the same time. Samsung have also included a new display as well for both the inside and outside. So you're looking at Corning Gorilla Glass Victors. So you're getting a stronger glass on there, which is pretty cool. The aluminum as well is, uh, aluminum frame is changed as well to be a lot stronger. So you're looking at about 10% stronger with that new armor uh, aluminum frame, which is pretty cool. This is now also IPX8 water and dust resistant. So this is the first, in fact, Samsung said, this is the world's first water resistant foldable smartphone. And in terms of battery, you're looking at 4,400 million power battery in there. For brightness, uh, for the main, main display, you're looking at 900 nits of brightness and the cover display will give you a thousand nits of peak brightness. The camera in there is pretty much the same as the Z Fold 2, but a few tweaks here and there in terms of algorithm, thanks to that new MPU that you get with a Snapdragon 888 processor. You also get a super glass uh, with a new Corning Gorilla Glass DX that's covering the camera lenses as well. So it should be sharper and a lot better, less blurrier and a lot of uh, less glare as well. So we'll see how that goes when we take into the real world. In terms of camera specs itself though, like I said, it's the same, but ultra wide angle, you're looking at 12 megapixel f2.2, uh, field of view around 128, 123 degrees field of view. You then have a wide angle lens at 12 megapixel as well, dual pixel opti autofocus, optical, optical image stabilization, f1.8 aperture. And for telephoto lens, you're looking at 12 megapixel PDAF with f2.4 aperture, optical image stabilization as well, and you get dual OIS. So you should get some really stable shots with that telephoto lens and using the Z Fold 2, uh, you don't get disappointed at all when it comes to taking photos on this thing, it just works really well. And you still get the same feature in terms of being able to have it in a, a laptop uh, format and take selfies, for example, use the main camera as a selfie if you really wanna do that. So you can get wide angle shots and all that kind of stuff. The cover camera itself is 10 megapixel at f2.2 with 80 degrees field of view. And you now have this under display camera on the front as well, which you won't really see it when you're playing games, for example, but when you, uh, doing another content. So for example, actually taking photos with it, you then notice that it's actually there. They've got this mesh sort of design that's underneath it that allows it to be uh, sort of make it disappear when you're playing games, for example, or using other content on that display. This is running on Android 11 operating system. And in terms of memory and uh, storage, you're looking at 12 gig of RAM and you have the option for 256 gigabytes of internal storage, or there's also 512 gigabytes internal storage version available as well. One thing that's obviously new to the Fold series is the new S Pen support. So you have this new S Pen Pro, which has LED indicator. Uh, you can easily, you have a button there to easily pair it and switch it as well. It supports air command and air actions. And 
you also got a device switching button as well. So you can switch it to the Z Fold mode, uh, which allows you for all those air command and air actions, etc. Uh, et or you can use it in S Pen mode, which allows you to then use it with S Pen uh, compatible devices like maybe the Tab S7, for example. And this is very good as well in terms of latency. You're looking at around 8.2 milliseconds latency when you touch it. And it has this nice feedback as well. As you're drawing on it, it sounds like paper. It sounds like you're actually scratching on the paper, which is really good. One thing I forgot to mention is the Z Fold 3 supports 25 watts uh, charging, fast charge as well. But back to the S Pen, you then have your S Pen Fold Edition, which also supports Air Command and is compatible with a Z Fold 3 only. With this pen, you can also get a case which allows you to dock it inside of the case. Uh, so you can have the device in the case and the pen with you at all times. The clear difference between these two besides being able to use the Pro uh, with other devices is the size as well. So you can see the S Pen Fold Edition is actually shorter than the S Pen Pro. And the S Pen Pro has Bluetooth in there uh, to be able to pair with other devices and also has a USB-C port at the top, which allows you to recharge it as well. So you get longer battery life on the S Pen Pro. One thing worth noting as well is the S Pen would only work on the inside screen. So on the, phone, on the cover screen, the S Pen would not work on that one. So bear that in mind. Moving on to the Z Flip 3. This is very familiar in terms of design. So if you've seen the Z Flip 2 before, uh, straight away you're familiar with the design and this the way that this works. But what's different here though is you now get dual speakers. Uh, so you get sp stereo speakers on the Z Flip 3 and the front screen as well is also larger as well. So it allows you to then swipe across the change from different camera angles, from wide, super wide angle, uh, sorry, ultra wide angle to just standard as well. So again, it looks really nice actually out of the two. This is probably the one that I'd want to go for this year because I just like the design. It looks fantastic and it's got all the durability features of the Z Fold 3, things like your Corning Gorilla Glass Victors, uh, Corning Gorilla Glass DX on the camera lenses as well, and this IPX8 uh, water and dust resistant as well. The Z Flip 3 is also available in many more colors as well. So you have the cream one, you have the green, lavender, phantom black, gray, white, and pink. Whereas previously we had uh, mirror purple, mirror black, and mirror gold. So you have more color options available to you this time. This is also gonna be rocking a five nanometer octa-core processor, so Snapdragon 888 processor compared to the previous seven nanometer processor. In terms of battery, the Z Flip 3 has 3,300 milliamp hour battery. You have eight gigabytes of RAM in there with the option to go for 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of internal storage, and that's UFS 3.1. Obviously, there's also the new Galaxy Buds and the new Samsung Galaxy Watch as well, which we'll touch on in a different video, but that's it in a nutshell for the new releases in terms of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3 and the new S Pen Pro and the S Pen as well for the Z Fold 3. Guys, if you have any questions, drop them below. Let me know what you think as well. Is this worth the upgrade? Uh, would you actually get one of these two devices? Let me know in the comments below. But in the meantime, smash the like button, subscribe as well, and make sure you hit the bell notification so every time there's a video like this, you get notified. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.